What's up everybody? Welcome back to Pablo's Toy Box Photography for another action figure review and today we're going to be taking a look at Beast Kingdom's Egg Attack Action Venom. As you can see we have a nice big open window showing the figure inside. We have a nice shot of Venom. Uh, we get to see a few accessories, uh, the two fisted hands that he comes with and the two extra head scopes that he does come with. We have a nice promotional shot of Venom right here on the bottom left hand corner. We have the title Venom. We have product number EAA087. We have a nice Beast Kingdom 10th anniversary logo on the bottom right hand corner. And on the top left hand corner we do have Marvel Spider-Man. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the side of the box. As you can see we have another nice promotional shot of Venom. On the right hand side we have the Egg Attack Action Series logo on the bottom left, uh, right hand side. And on the left hand side we do have the title Venom. The product number again is EAA087. We have a nice Marvel Spider-Man logo on the top. And on the back of the box <clears throat> we have some more nice promotional shots of Venom and some of the poses you can put him in. Uh, you can see one of the extra head scopes with some of the extra accessories that he does come with. And on the left hand side we have a nice promotional shot of Venom right here and it shows the accessory of the tongue that you could add and remove. We do have the title We Are Venom. On the left hand side we have the description of all the uh, pieces that come in this set. The large image just does continue to the side. And on this side of the box we get the same Marvel Spider-Man logo and we have the same title Venom with the product number and we also have the Egg Attack Action Series logo on the bottom right hand corner. On the top of the box we get a nice Marvel Spider-Man logo. And on the bottom of the box, we get to see all the legalese and warnings. Alright, now let's go ahead and break this bad boy out of the box and take a closer look at the figure. Alright, here's Venom out of the box. Now I gotta say, this figure is amazing, man. Beast Kingdom did a flippin' amazing job uh, designing this figure. He is such a beast. I I think they took inspiration from the Spectacular Spider-Man animated series because the Venom in that series looks very similar to how this figure looks uh, as well as the head sculpts of Eddie Brock that I'll be showing soon. I think the head sculpts look just like Eddie Brock did in that animated series and they look amazing. But yeah, overall this figure is so sweet. It did such an amazing job in the sculpt work that it has. His muscles on his uh, six pack are nicely sculpted. The muscles underneath his uh, chest are nicely sculpted as well. The, uh, you can see the veins sculpted on his shoulders, on his biceps, his forearms, and he has some veins sculpted over his hands, which is pretty cool. Yeah, overall, nice. He also has some veins sculpted on his legs and the sculpt work on his muscles on his thighs his his shins his calves he also has veins here on his calves they're pretty good man they did a good job with this figure yep overall cool figure and you get some more muscle scope on the back yeah this is such a cool figure let's take a quick look at some of the articulation now uh, his arms do go up but that far up not too bad they do rotate all the way around he has no bicep swivel which is kinda which kinda sucks but I can understand why I mean you can see the sculpt work where the bicep swivel would be but it's such a small piece and the peg joint that it has here it's large and I don't think they would have had the space to put another one there 
but it doesn't hinder his articulation too much. So his elbow is on a ball joint with the peg. It doesn't go quite 90. Oh, his hand popped off. His hands are on a peg joint or on a peg with a ball joint. Can go up and down. You can turn it around. Can go sideways. He does have an upper upper torso cut, which allows him to go side to side. He can twist. He does have a waist swivel. It's a little tight, but he does he can turn side to side. Doesn't quite go all the way around. I don't want to force it. It feels like there's some kind of tension there. His legs can kick about that much forward. He has a single jointed knee. It's on a ball joint with the peg. His foot can go up about that much, back about that much. Has a little bit of rock rocker to it because it is on a ball joint on the peg. He does have a toe hinge. His leg can kick far about that far back. He can crunch quite a bit forward. Not bad for a figure this big. He can crunch arch that far back. Now in all his heads, they can go all the way around. He can look down about that much, which is pretty impressive. He cannot look that far back. That's as high, as far back as he can go. And that's due to the fact that he doesn't have a neck joint like the other egg attack action figures. If he would have had that there, I think his head would have been able to go back a lot further. On his Venom head, he does have an articulated mouth. It's on a hinge. Can open up about that wide. His head can tilt side to side quite a bit. It's awesome. Love that. Yeah, overall, this figure is awesome. Love this figure. I think Beast Kingdom did a great job. And yeah, <laughs> such a cool figure, man. I'm having a lot of fun with this figure. Um, now let's go ahead and take a look at the, the other head sculpts that he comes with. Okay, let's go ahead and take it this take a closer look at this head first. Uh, I did want to show how the eyes are interchangeable with this figure. He does have a total of four eye designs, and these are a bit different from, uh, say, Spider Gwen's eyes, uh, any of the Spider Man's, or even Deadpool. Uh, instead of eyes themselves, they did a whole. It's like a I consider it a cap. Now this comes off, it's fairly tight, just gotta work it in there. Oh, this one's pretty tight actually. I don't remember it being that tight. There we go. Yeah, so as you can see, the head, the dome of the head is completely white. It's like a Pearl Lessons white. Um, it's a nice color. It's got a nice little shimmer to it, nice little shine. Um, all these head or eye caps have a key in, on the bottom that fits in the keyhole on the, on the top of the head. Uh, I kind of wish that Beast Kingdom had used the magnets like they do with the Spider-Man and Deadpool and Spider-Gwen eyes. Because this makes it a little... Um, tight uh, or it's a little bit more uh, it takes more effort to replace these than it would have been if they were just magnetic caps if they would have had a magnet on top of here and little metal plates down here and it would have been easy to just swap these out but uh, I mean it's not it's not a big deal it's not it's not too too bad to do uh, let me go ahead and put it the other set 
And once you put it on there, you just gotta push it down. So the, this set has his eyes a little wider open. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And you can't see that seam line that goes around for the cap. It, it works really well with the sculpt of the head and the mouth. It's pretty nice. They did a good job with that. Let's swap this guy out. This next set, it's they're more a little bit more narrower. It's more of his uh, sinister look. I think it gives him that uh, that uh, furious look, like he's about to pounce on you. All right, swap this one. All right, on this one, he has one wide open eye, and his other eye is a little bit more narrower. It's he's it kind of has that kind of winking look, or like that, like he's staring you down with the one eye. It's a pretty nice look on him too. Overall, these these little eye caps are pretty cool. I do like the design of it, and it has a lot of texture built into each one of them. You can see like the wrinkles of where the symbiote. It's kind of like moving over his head. It's pretty neat. I think take this guy off. And let me go ahead and put the other one back. You know what? I'm going to put the one with this more sinister look. I like this, this look on him. That's pretty nice. And with this head scope, um, it does come with an accessory that goes with this. If you can see inside the mouth, he has this peg in there. Let me make sure I get a good close shot of that inside. Stand. Oh, sorry. Tip them over. <laughs> he is a little top heavy. You gotta just get this guy balanced well. So yeah. If you see that little peg inside his mouth, now that's for the accessory. It's right there. There's a little pig right there inside his mouth. That's for the the tongue. He does have an articulated tongue uh, that can just easily just pops right in there. Let's see if I can get this in there. <laughs> this this accessory is awesome I love that they included an articulated tongue for Venom that just gives Venom that iconic look where he has his tongue out it would have been cool if they had some added extra little details of the either like green ooze on his tongue but that could easily be added with some slime for the photographs I, I might do that when I get a chance but yeah Overall, having this articulated tongue, you can get so many different looks on Venom. <laughs> I really like this feature. It is pretty cool. It does make his mouth a little heavy on the lower jaw once you have the tongue on there, but it's no big deal. You can find a way to, you know, close it up a little bit. But yeah, overall, I mean, yeah, this looks so cool. This is awesome. Really love this. All right, let's take a closer look at the other head scopes. All right, here's his unmasked head of Eddie Brock. And as you can see, they did a good job with this head scope. They have a lot of great detail on here. His ears are sculpted in there. His eyebrows are sculpted and then painted. His eyes are articulated, which is pretty cool. You get different expressions depending on how you adjust the eyes. His nose is articul uh, is uh, sculpted on there as well as his mouth, his lips. He's even got a little bit of wrinkles in between his eyes to show where, like he's uh, making a, a, a stern face. His cheeks are sculpted, they're raised. It's got some, some nice um, sculpt work done on there. And his hair is also sculpted. 
it's got a lot of nice little detail in there showing his hair combed back it's pretty neat this is a nice uh, unmasked Eddie Brock head All right, the next set of accessories that I'm going to show work really well with this head scope. Uh, on the description of the box, they call them symbiotic ooze, but uh, we know them better as, or I know them better as, is uh, Venom's uh, tendrils. But he's got two large ones. And he also has two smaller ones and now these guys go plugged in on his back on his back side he does have these um, ball joints with pegs on them and these guys easily just plug in here And there's no certain order or certain position these have to go in. You can mix match however you want. Oops. And yep, there you go. Yeah, these work out awesome with this head scope. It just adds that extra effect that Eddie Brock is getting consumed by the symbiote and becoming Venom. Yeah, overall great job. These look fantastic and since they are on little ball pegs, they are articulated. They spin all the way around and depending on how you position the pig, you can articulate him forward you can wrap it around his head yeah it just gives an extra level of, of uh, special effects to it I guess you could say and it's pretty cool these little tendrils are pretty awesome they did such a great job the one thing I do wish they did with this figure is what they did with the iron spider um, on the iron spider he had a swappable plate that goes on the back where his Waldo's plug into and you can swap that plate out with one that doesn't have the peg holes in it so that way he has a nice smooth back I wish they would have done the same with Venom on Venom he does not have that option uh, those ball pegs are there permanently uh, I don't think you really take them out maybe if you force them out but then I'll just leave a big peg hole and that's not gonna look any good so I wish you just had that option just like the Iron Spider had the option to do that but it's not that big of a deal. Overall still, this looks pretty cool. Love what they did with this and I love that option. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the interchangeable hands that he comes with. He does come with a pair of open hands, which are the hands that he has on inside the box. And he also comes with a pair of fisted hands. And both sets of hands have nice sculpt work on them. They do have the veins on there. And on his knuckles, he has these little spikes on both his hands, which are pretty cool. They look pretty neat on him. Now, another cool thing you can do with the with the with the tendrils is you can use those as his hands also. Since this figure only comes with two sets of hands, the open hands and fisted hands, uh, you can take these tendrils out. Take this guy out. Pop his hand right off. And put this tendril in there. And now he has what looks like an animated hand. Kind of showing that his hand is either extending out and the symbiote is just trying to reach out and grab something. Which is a pretty cool feature. I'm so glad that you can do that with the tendrils. Uh, that you don't just need to use them on his back you can use them as hands both the large ones and the small ones and that's a pretty cool feature I really do like that because uh, it gives you more options to uh, pose this figure and photograph him doing neat stuff and I really like that that's pretty cool and the final accessory that he comes with 
This is, of course, his figure stand. Now, these Beast Kingdom figure stands are pretty awesome. Uh, they don't take up too much space, and they do a pretty good job at holding up the figure. This one's a little different from the other figure stands, because this figure is a larger figure. So, instead of a straight um, a stand, it has a more angular one, and instead of the, a clamp that goes around the waist, this has more of a V-shape. Where the figure sits on top of it versus it clamping it around the waist and so all you have to do is simply just put the figure on top and it does a pretty good job at holding the figure and you don't have to worry about the figure ever falling which is pretty cool it's a pretty neat design and yeah and this uh figure stand does have the spider-man logo and marble printed on top and then it has Venom printed in the front. Next I do want to compare them to some other Egg Attack action figures that I do have. And I have two here next to me that I want to compare his size to. Uh, right here we have Spider-Gwen. Which you can see he towers over her. And he's really bulky. He's really big. And then we do have my favorite one in my collection which is Logan. So yeah, he's a big guy, man. The top of Logan's head pretty much is about the at the shoulder of Venom once you stand this guy up straight. Yeah, you can definitely see the size in this figure. It's pretty neat. They did a good job. I really do like what Beast Kingdom is doing with their larger figures. And here's one more quick comparison uh, to the Marvel Legends uh, Monster Venom. As you can see, they both look... Uh, a little similar uh, in size or not so much size but in built but they're actually you know they're about the same height uh, but yeah now both of these have that monstrous built which is pretty cool uh, this is one of my favorite characters and he looks pretty neat all right one last thing that I should have mentioned at the beginning of the video and I forgot to talk about and touch on is the paint deco on him or the, or the paint job uh, the paint that they used on him is like a like a purplish blue with some light shading of black here and there. They did a great job on it. Uh, depending on how you put light on him, it it changes a little bit. Like you see a bit a little bit of, of a purple hue with blue, and then you'll see the black. They did a good job on the paint job. It's pretty nice. And the spider logo painted on him. Uh, they went with a silverish color which uh, I'm not too sure why. I mean, it looks great. Uh, it's, it's a nice job. The lines are really clean. I have no paint imperfections on this figure. Um, but I think I would have liked it uh, white. If they would have used that same uh, pearlescent white that they used for the head dome for the eyes, I think uh, it would have looked really nice as well. But this silver color is not that bad. I mean, it, it's, it's, a nice, it's a nice color. Uh, but yeah, I think... I would have preferred white and I think a lot of people would have preferred white because uh, that's the traditional color scheme for that spider on his chest but uh, overall this figure is amazing I love this figure Beast Kingdom did such a great job designing this figure and like I said earlier I think they took a lot of inspiration from the Spectacular Spider-Man animated series because that Venom looks very similar to this figure as well as the sculpted Eddie Brock heads uh, with the blonde hair and the blue eyes. Uh, they look very similar. So I think that's where they took the inspiration from. And they did a good job on it, man. Uh, yeah, it may have a little bit of um, limited articulation, but that's not a big deal. That's easily uh, overcome by how you decide to pose him. Uh, and there's ways around it. Uh, he's, he's a lot of fun to pose and photograph uh, and if you do decide to get this figure I think you would have a lot of fun with him and I do recommend this figure uh, he is a lot of fun uh, I can't wait to get the spider-man figure that's coming out I hope they start shipping out next month uh, I really want to photograph him with Venom I want to put them up against each other uh, I think those photos are gonna come out great but uh, yeah that's a wrap for this uh, review if you liked the review please hit that like button and subscribe and until next time, peace.